Hi students, welcome to today's lecture. Today I am going to talk about gastrulation. As you all know, my name is Mrs. Mukta Kothari and I am working as an assistant professor at Modern College of Art, Science and Commerce, Shivajinagar, Pune. We all know that gastrulation is a very important process in the development of an animal. So let us begin with our lecture. Before we start with the gastrulation, let us first understand how exactly the animal development takes place, in what all stages it takes place. So the first stage in the animal development, it is the gametogenesis. So where the gametes, that is male and female gametes will be formed. In the next step, that is the fertilization, these gametes will fuse, the male and female gamete will fuse to form a single cell zygote. In the next step, that is cleavage, the single cell zygote will undergo mitotic divisions to form a number of cells. Then the cells will be arranged in a specific manner to form a blastula and then the gastrulation happens where the cells will move from one place to the another place and they will establish themselves in a very specific manner in order to form the germ layers. Next stage in the development is organogenesis where different organs are formed from different germ layers and the last stage that is the adult form adult is formed and when it attains the maturity it again starts with the gametogenesis. So, this cycle will continue. Now, here we are mainly interested in the gastrulation process for today's lecture. So, let us know what is exactly gastrulation and why it is so much important in the animal development process. Now, what exactly is gastrulation? So, the gastrulation is the process of highly coordinated cell and tissue movement whereby the cells of the blastule are dramatically rearranged. Now, as I have told you in the development of animal, the gastrulation process, it is preceded by the blastula. Now, the cells of the blastula, they are also arranged in a specific manner, but here there won't be any cell movement. But as soon as the gastrulation will initiate, the cells will start moving from one place to another place within the embryo. Now this movement, it is not very random movement, but it is a very specific and very well coordinated movement. Okay, now there are different types of movements which will happen during the gastrulation of different animals and uh, I'm going to talk about it more in the next slide. But what is the effect of this movement? So the cells will have new positions and they will have new neighbors because they are moving from one position to the another position, a different position they are going to take during the gastrulation. Now this process, it is very important because it establishes a body plan for that organism. Now how exactly it establishes a body plan and why, why it, this gastrulation is so important? It's because it is going to form the germ layers of an organism. Now, in case of the triploblast, the germ layers can be ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Whereas in case of the diploblast, these, it can be ectoderm and endoderm. Because they are diploblastic, there will be only two germ layers. Now, understand this germ layers, because after gastrulation, the next step in the development is organogenesis. So each germ layer will form a specific organ. Okay, so now when the gastrulation will happen, when the germ layers are formed, there will be a division of labor between these layers. Okay, now the ectoderm will form specific organs, mesoderm will be involved in the formation of some other specific organs and the end, similar is the case with the endoderm. So ectoderm for example will form epidermal and nervous tissue. So mesoderm can, uh, it will form the blood and other type of tissues and the endoderm it is uh, for example it will form the inner lining of the cut. This is how it is going to play a very important role in the next step of an animal development that is organogenesis and that is why understand here a single mistake in the movement of a cells or tissue can have a large impact during the organ formation. That is why the gastrulation is a very important process in the development of an 
animal. As I have explained to you earlier also that uh, in gastrulation there are different types of movements are involved. For different animals, the combination of the movements can be different. So let us have a look at the different types of movements which are involved in the gastrulation one by one. The first movement which is involved in the gastrulation, first type of movement, it is invagination. So what is invagination? By definition, the infolding of a region of cells much like the indenting of a soft rubber ball when it is poked. It is nothing but the invagination. I'm going to explain you in detail about uh, these movements in the next slide using the diagrams. Uh, which I have referred from the developmental biology by Gilbert. Let us now just focus on the definitions of these terms. So the second movement it is involution that is in turning of or inward movement of an expanding outer layer so that it spreads over the internal surface of the remaining external cells. The third movement it is the ingression the migration of individual cells from the surface layer into the interior of the embryo. Now in the ingression, ingression is the only movement where the individual cells are involved and not the cell sheet. All the other movements that is imagination, involution and further two movements are there. So these all movements they involve the movement of cell sheet instead of individual cells. But ingression is the movement where you are going to consider the migration of individual cells. Fourth movement, it is the delamination. That is the splitting of one cellular sheet into two or more or less parallel sheets. So the one sheet it splits into the two or more parallel sheets. The fifth and the last type of movement it is the epiboli. Epiboli movement it is the movement of epithelial sheet. That is usually of the ectodermal cells which are on the or which are at the surface of the embryo or which are which is the outermost layer of an embryo to enclose the deeper layers of an embryo. So whatever movements will happen in the outermost layer of an embryo in order to enclose the deeper layers of an embryo this type of movement it is known as epibolic movement. Let us look at the diagrams and let us try to understand how these movements will occur. So the first movement, if you have a look at, that is the imagination. Imagination where if you consider a, a cricket ball and if you try to poke the cricket ball with your finger. So what happens? The poked part will go into the uh, cavity of that cricket ball. So in the same manner, uh, the cell movement will happen in the embryo. So what exactly will happen? So there will be infolding of the cell sheet into the embryo. So where what happens as you can see in the first diagram here in the imagination, you can see over here that the cell sheet. Now here the individual cell movement is not involved but a movement of cell sheet is involved. So here if you as if someone has tried to poke the uh, part of a cell sheet into the blastocell okay so this is how it will appear and this poked part the poked region will enter into the blastocell and it will start moving towards the opposite end so that is the first movement first type of movement uh, in the gastrulation now the second movement that is the involution movement so here what happens again here the cell sheet is involved not the individual cells but here what happens the cells will move into the blastocell in such a manner that once they enter into the blastocell they will place themselves just below the outer external layer. So as you can see in the diagram uh, look at the arrows. So once they are moving into the blastocell inside the embryos they are placing themselves just below the outer external layer. Okay, so the external layer they have shown in the blue color and the inwardly or interning of the cells which are forming a new layer just below the outer blue colored external layer they, that uh, they have shown in the pinkish color. So this is the second movement uh, which is involved in the gastrulation. The third movement now here you have to consider the migration or movement of individual cells, not a cell sheet. So here what happens? The 
individual cells they will move into the blastocell okay so one by one they will start they will detach from the existing layer they will move into the blastocell so this type of movement it is known as ingression then the fourth movement that is the delamination delamination as you can see in the diagram so what is happening here there will be a single layer of cells a single layer of cell sheet it will split into two and this splitted sheet it will move into the blastocell so this is the fourth type of movement that is delamination the fifth type of movement that is epiboly now you if you carefully look at the diagram of involution and epiboly you will feel like both the diagrams are similar but you have to consider here that what layer you are taken into consideration if you are talking about the movement of the cells which uh, which is happening in the outermost layer of the cells that is here we will consider the movement for the blue colored cells not the pink colored cells so if the movement of the blue colored cells if you will consider so the cells will move in the outermost layer of an embryo in such a manner that they will try to cover the inner layers of the embryo okay so this type of movements will have uh, will be called as epibolic movement now as you can see now you must you might have understood that the in invagination involution ingression delamination these movements these are happening uh, these in this type of movement the cells are moving into the blastocell whereas in the epiboly the movement it is uh, specifically happening in the outermost layer of the cells the cells are not moving into the blastocell okay so these four movements that is invagination involution ingression and delamination these are called as embolic movements okay and which are different from the epibolic movement that is the fifth movement it is different from that okay i hope now you are clear with the five different types of movements which are happening during the gastrulation now you have to understand here that in different animals combination of different type of movements will be there which will happen during the gastrulation okay so it is not necessary that every animal should follow all these five types of gastrulation movements it is not compulsory that a specific movement should happen in an animal gastrulation but in different type of animals different combination of movements will occur in order to establish the three germ layers that is in order to complete the gastrulation process in the last slide i am i want you to explain about the axes which are considered during the development of an organism here uh, there is uh, for fun there is uh, one animated diagram which i have shown over here and i am going to explain what all axes uh, an embryo considers during the development now basically there are mainly three important axes which are considered during the embryo development and uh, the first axis it is the anterior and posterior axis so uh, you have to understand that this axis consideration by the embryo is very important for the positioning of a specific organ at specific site in inside the embryo okay so the first axis it is anterior posterior axis and as you can see in the animated diagram the head region it is showing the anterior part and the leg in, uh, indicates the posterior region the second axis which is considered that is the ventral and dorsal axis so ventral it is the front side of an organism or embryo and the dorsal is the back side of an organism or embryo the third axis it is the right and left axis that is your the right side of an organism and the left side of an organism now understand for some organisms like for example the drosophila the anterior posterior axis it is established even before the fertilization for most of the animals it is established this axis are established after fertilization and for uh, for some animals like frog a specific uh, 
a specific thing that is for example here the point of sperm entry it plays a very important role in the axis formation or establishment so uh, this is about the axis which are considered during the development of an organism with this i'm going to conclude with today's session thank you so much for your patient listening please do not forget to like and share thank you very much